had an nice ERA of .73. Taylor Trammell. Got the late swing. Fouls it off over by the Indians' dugout on the third base side. Well, Trammell getting his second plate appearance of the day. Grounded out to second base in the sixth inning. You know, I think a guy like this with that arm action, we had it with Adam Simber, right? Right. Before they have it with Adam Simber, exactly. too. Now with the Cleveland Indians. But I think if you can consistently throw strikes to have that different look out of the bullpen with that low three-quarter sidearm action. Liner to center. Longo coming in. He can't get it. It eats him up. Ends up behind him. And Trammell will cruise into second base. Well, Longo's had a tough time out there in center field. A little indecisive that time. Ends up. Not being able to knock it down, got a piece of it. In. I think see that. And takes the strike from the sidewinder. Yeah. Off double here. Here's Luis Campusano again. Enjoy. We're Fouled out to the second right. baseman in the seventh inning and takes the strike from the sidewinder. You know, you don't have to throw that hard to be effective when you have that type of arm angle. Most of the guys that throw from down there, you know, they're mid 80s maybe. What makes it so tough? The release point? Yeah, or? the release point. I mean, it's, it's actually kind of, they're you know pitching uphill a little bit, it looks like. Gives you that illusion. Then you're throwing that frisbee, that breaking ball, to the right-hander. Why don't more guys do it? Not used to it. You're so conditioned as a kid, right? I think this is a secondary. It would, that would be an interesting question for Broom. Hey. Strikes out Campusano, his first K since coming in. Is this something that you developed later on in your career? Were you a traditional high three-quarter guy before this? Edward Olivares coming up. Last time he was up, he did this. Hanging breaking ball. He spins up there. He's got hit me all over it. You hang me, and he will bang me. And he did just that. That was a no-doubter. One of the 10 hits put together by the Padres in this game. The one pitch a little bit low and it's one and one. Eighteen home runs for Oliveris last year. Padres will be in Tempe tomorrow. Take on the Angels. Ooh. Pretty good pitch. And once again, this looks like it's a hanging pitch. It's very hittable, but because of the arm angle. Kind of wow. straightened him up a little bit, right? Kind of fooled by that pitch. Didn't get the call. 2-1. And it's fouled off to make it 2-2. Two and two. Led the Texas League in runs scored last year with 85. Total bases with 221. And a second in RBIs, third in hits. Had 138 hits last year. With the Sod Poodles in Amarillo. Spent the entire season in Amarillo. Came to the Padres from the Blue Jays in the Hervis Salarte deal. January of 2018. Oops, this one down the left field line foul out ahead.
Outside ball four, Oliveris down to first base with a one out walk. Two on, one away, and here is Michael Geddes. Geddes grounded out to shortstop in the seventh inning. Take strike one. For Gettys to go the other way. The center fielder Longo over towards right center field. Gettys, 24 years old, a second round pick. 2014 for the Padres. Last year in El Paso, setting career highs. And doubles led the Chihuahuas in doubles, triples with five, 31 home runs. Spent the entire season at AAA. And lines one to third. Arroyo took a look towards second. 